The spherical wave disproof of special relativity. Could Einstein be wrong? Einstein's theory of special relativity is arguably one of the most important advances of 20th century physics. It's a remarkable theory that tells us that, despite our common sense notions, space and time are not absolute or universal quantities. They vary for each observer, in precisely the way needed to ensure that the laws of physics remain the same for everyone. The theory is widely agreed upon by experts, robustly verified by hundreds of experiments, and used in everyday devices like your GPS satellite navigation system. And yet despite all of this, it's not hard to find books and YouTube channels arguing passionately that it must be wrong, and offering a range of seemingly plausible disproofs. In this video I'm going to look at the alleged, spherical wave disproof, and I'll explain why it's completely wrong. At its heart, Einstein's special theory of relativity concerns itself with how measurements of space and time are affected by any relative motion between an observer traveling at a constant velocity, and the thing being observed. Each observer is given their own personal coordinate system, called an inertial frame, that moves with the observer, and has carefully synchronized clocks at every point in space. Any event that the observer sees, can be assigned a well-defined place and time in this inertial frame. If one observer watches two events, perhaps two stars exploding, they can record when and where each of these events happened in their coordinate system. They can then calculate how far apart in space they were, and how much time elapsed between them. A second observer moving relative to the first, watching the same two events can do the same using their own coordinate system. Now it's probably no surprise to discover that the second observer records different coordinates for the two events, as they are using a different coordinate system. But what is astonishing is that the two observers would not agree on how far apart these events were, how much time elapsed between them, and even, potentially, which happened, first. Fortunately, Einstein figured out the mathematical equations that allow us to convert event coordinates seen in one observer's inertial frame, to the coordinates that would be seen by another. These are the Lorentz transforms, named after the scientist who first proposed them. In relativity, there's no absolute time and space, and so we can choose either frame to be at rest and consider the other frame to be moving at some relative velocity, v. The equations work just as well in either direction simply by reversing the sign of the velocity. So we can take the x, y, z and time t coordinates in our rest frame, and convert them to x prime, y prime, z prime and t prime coordinates seen from the moving frame. To keep things simple, the equations assume that the axes of both inertial frames are aligned, and that the moving frame is traveling along the positive x-axis. So now we can finally talk about spherical waves. As you know, the speed of light in a vacuum is constant, traveling at 300,000 km per second in any and all directions. It doesn't matter how fast the source or the observer are moving, the speed of light will always appear to be the same. So if we had a short flash of light, then we would expect this to propagate outwards from the source, forming a perfectly spherical light wave. And according to relativity, it should appear this way to all observers. In his 1905 paper, Einstein provides a mathematical proof that this is exactly what happens, so there really shouldn't be any doubt about this. However this is hotly contested by relativity deniers who think they've found a flaw. Let's follow along with their argument. So let's set up the scenario. We'll have superhero girl watching events from the Earth, and declare this to be our rest frame. Whilst superhero guy flies past at half the speed of light, taking the moving frame with him. The light source will be stationary in the rest frame, but will appear to move to the left in the moving frame. Everyone agrees that superhero girl will see a spherical light wave, but what will superhero guy see? To answer that question, relativity deniers typically freeze one moment of time, and pick a handful of points on the crest of the spherical light wave. They then apply the Lorentz transforms to those points, and are delighted to see that the formulae produce an ellipse, and not a circle, in the coordinates of the moving frame. This, they claim, disproves Einstein's assertion that a spherical wave appears spherical to all observers. Einstein has clearly made a major blunder, in their eyes, and, must, be wrong. Part of the problem here is that a spherical wave is much more than just one circle at one moment in time. It's a shape that grows and evolves over time and space 
and so eight points is just not enough to really see everything that's happening. So here's a plot of 25,000, randomly selected points, all chosen to lie on the circular cross-section of a spherical wave as it grows over its first five seconds in the rest frame. We're also going to carefully follow what happens in time, as well as space, so every single one of these points has a time coordinate attached, that I'm simply lighting up in sequence to animate the wave. I can produce a slightly clearer static display of the wave by highlighting points at one second intervals. Now we can see the shape of the wavefront frozen at multiple points in time simultaneously. Next, let's add the view from the moving frame on the right, showing these same points after the Lorentz transforms have been applied. Initially, as now, I'll start the moving frame at rest, and build up speed so that we can watch the changes evolve. Now Superhero Guy is building up speed to reach half the speed of light. It's very clear that as he does, the shape of the wave in the moving frame changes to show elliptical rings, just as the relativity deniers claim. But we're not quite done yet. I promised we'd follow what happens in time as well as space, so let's flip these diagrams onto their sides so that we can use the vertical direction to show where the points fall along a vertical time axis. If we focus first on the rest frame, the shape formed in space-time by the expanding circle of light is simply an upside-down cone. This is exactly what we would expect to see with a circle that expands with time. Also notice that the rings, each highlighting simultaneous moments in rest frame time, all lie in horizontal planes. But if we look at the same points in the moving frame, we see a more distorted shape, and those originally circular, horizontal bands now form elliptical bands that slope upwards in the direction of the negative x-prime axis. But if we rotate these shapes about the time axis, we can clearly see that their sides slope upwards at a constant 45 degrees. So both shapes are still cones, but the one on the left is formed by circles, and the one on the right is formed by ellipses. But what are those ellipses anyway? They are merely the points that originally shared common times in the rest frame, but clearly they don't share common times in the moving frame. Else they'd be horizontal rather than sloping. Different parts of each ring are observed at different times by the moving observer which is precisely why they're at different heights in the diagram. To remind ourselves that these ellipses represent rest frame time, I'm going to color them in rest frame colors. You'll recall that observers in inertial frames in relative motion don't agree on either space or time coordinates. So if you want to understand what a second observer actually sees, you have to consider their own particular space and time, and not someone else's space and time. So let's now make that correction, and highlight the points that do share common times in the moving observer's frame. Of course these are all horizontal planes, that now intersect the light cone to form circular rings. And if we now rotate this view back to a space-only view, the circular rings reappear into view, demonstrating that the moving observer really does see spherical waves, exactly as Einstein claimed, and not ellipses at all. And so, to summarize and conclude, special relativity predicts that light propagating outwards from a point source will appear as a spherical wave to all observers, no matter what their state of constant relative motion with respect to the source. Einstein provided a mathematical proof, back in 1905, that the Lorentz transforms guarantee this is always true, and in this video I have simply applied these transforms to 25,000 points to illustrate that this all works exactly as it's supposed to. Special relativity deniers incorrectly assume that for one spherical wave to transform into another spherical wave, then each individual circular ring must also transform into another individual circular ring. But that's not the case, it's not how this works, and it's mathematically untrue. As you'll have seen in this video, light cones can be constructed from ellipses just as easily as from circles, and the sets of points that form simultaneous rings in the rest frame are not the same sets of points that form simultaneous rings in the moving frame, because time is transformed too. The spherical wave disproof ignores the transformation of time, gets an unexpected result, and tries to blame this problem on the theory. Given that special relativity is all about how space and time transform, ignoring the effects of time would seem to be a major oversight. I think we can safely conclude that special relativity is not broken, disproven, or even remotely troubled by the spherical wave argument. It doesn't even come close. Goodbye. See you again soon.